Hey everyone, welcome to The Breakdown. I am Kurt and I have a very special guest with me today. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good. Let's play a little <laughs> game and see if you can kind of make out who that is, everyone. Just give us something. Uh, I got nothing. nothing. I got you nothing. got nothing? <laughs> oh, that's great. The laugh should do it alone. Hey, hey we got Jamal here. So excited. Hey guys, how you doing? What an awesome day. Thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Absolutely. Kind of sad. We were supposed to have Luke I here know. right by our side. I know. I know Luke's kind of upset. He he wanted to be here. He, I wanted him to be here. I did too. I was he's, ready. He's awesome. Yeah, he is. For those of you who don't know, Luke is an exceptional note taker. Yeah. He, he really is. <laughs> and neither you nor I. No. Like win in that category. Sure. We, t- we take notes, but it's definitely in our brains. It is in our yeah. brains. It's sort of like this <laughs> mental, spiritual absorption yes. yeah. that happens. Because yeah. I have found, um, you know, Luke tells me that he he actually retains better when writing things down. Yes. Which is probably why Pastor Zach rehearses if you're writing things down. Sure. That is not the way I learn. I yeah, need to no. focus on you. I need to study your eyes. I yeah. need to watch everything. And I take it in. Yeah. And I have these memories. Yes. So um, is that similar to you? I'm definitely an auditory learner. So okay. I need to hear it. Yeah. Uh, again, faith comes by hearing, right? So yeah, that, yeah. I, I lean into that. Um, I need to hear it in order to learn it. Yeah. So that's something huge for me. Uh, that's why it, sometimes when I'm taking notes, it like dis- it pulls me away Correct. from. But Holly takes great notes. So that's why I'm like, okay, I could just lean over. And, that's and read right. What she just did wrote. you get? What he just said. Yeah, exactly. What did he say again? Because I was supposed to write it down, exactly. and my brain didn't catch up. Exactly. I'm still on point one. I'm yes. still meditating. My soul is still chewing on that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And that's what I said to you. You know, I, I really, I told Luke I wanted to have you on. Um, you, you obviously taught and preached a couple of weeks ago, and you know, Pastor Zach picked up in one area that that God was really highlighting. Listen. But I wanted to tell you this. You know. I am still mulling over, meditating on this word that the Lord gave you last year Praise about God. subtracting to multiply, and then what you brought us this year. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you have picked up on this in your in your time here that there seems to be, regardless of who preaches, regardless of who teaches, there's this like resounding theme. Yes, sir. Like the Spirit, because we're in this apostolic covering, because we're prophetic and we're open to the voice of the Lord. Yeah. There's just like God can weave together these messages yeah, from yeah, yeah. multiple sources. Yeah, I, I, it's like a lineup to me. There's, mm. there's something when I first got here, the thing that I, that I continued to say was that it felt like God was putting different ingredients in the pot and stirring them together. Cause like me and you got here around the same time. Same time. Yeah. Um, and it felt like, okay, God, these aren't necessary. I said this to someone last week. These aren't necessarily the ingredients I would have put in here. Mm. Like I wouldn't have mixed the ketchup with the cinnamon or, you know, you, like that's weird. <laughs> God, that's weird. Right. But when he puts it together and then you start to smell the aroma, you're like, mm. I've never smelled anything like this before, Yeah. but it smells like something that I need to come towards. And I feel like that is what the Lord is doing uh, as, as he lines up the worship and the word. Yeah. I feel like the ingredients that he's putting in, I would not have put those ingredients together, but thank God his thoughts are higher than mine. So good. And his ways are higher than mine. So um, good. And it's become something really beautiful if you can track it through. Yeah. And really pay attention to it. It's something that the Lord, the Lord is bringing together certain things. There's order uh, coming into the house. Uh, somebody made a comment to me last week that there's so much freedom in our house. Yeah. And I said, yes, sir, there is because there's order. That's right. That's actually chaos comes out of the other side. That's right. But That's there's right. an order that the Lord is is bringing. And I feel like just to that point, Kurt, and I know you guys said that last week on the breakdown, it's like no matter who is talking, mm. the Lord is lining it up. And I think it's beautiful. That's it. fantastic. Well, you, you talk about these ingredients and two visualizations are going off in my mind right now. I have the Ratatouille, the movie, <laughs> where he takes, you know, one try this and try this and yes. then try it together. <laughs> yeah. And it's so cool. Yeah. Um, but then I also think about the word that the Lord was bringing forth at the earlier part of this year in January that um, it is God who sets into the body, the members, yeah. that he sets the members yeah. in the body yes. as he wills, yes. as he pleases. Yes. And so this is why we don't have a right to say, hey, I don't really need that hand yeah. over there. Yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah. that toe. Yeah. God put it there. And like you said, you probably wouldn't have put the ketchup and the cinnamon. Yeah, No, I would not have put those together <laughs> at all. But I feel like the Lord is doing that kind of thing. He knows what he's doing. Yes, sir. Yes, he does. Yeah, he puts the pieces together well. He does a really good. Again, I'm I'm amazed just by I, I I say this all the time. Like everything in the natural to me mirrors something in the spirit. Yeah. And so I, 
watching the body heal and watching certain things happen mm. that are a natural process. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's how the Lord puts together For sure. the body of Christ. Yes, There's healing actually naturally in the body of I Christ. Know. If you can get together with the rest, there's something that happens. It scabs, it bleeds for a little while, but then it scabs over and then that peels off and the body comes back together in a beautiful way. So true. If, if you can actually get together with the body, mm. uh, the hand that's separated never heals. Yeah. Oh, it's so it true. Dies. It dies. Mm-hmm. It dies. You know, as you're talking right now, I keep thinking about the importance of kind of the lesson of the past two years of my life has been you can have scars because you talk about the the bleeding, yes, sir. the scabbing, yeah. and then the scar yeah. where the tissue has come back together and it looks a little different than it previously sure. did. But if a, a healthy scar doesn't have a lot of excess scar tissue and you can have scars without wounds and scars without wounds have a memory and they can actually teach a lot. Sure. Which is why Jesus in his glorified body still has scars, but he has no more wounds. And so this point that you're breathing out about the importance of, Hey, I may not have mixed all this together, but this is why we look at HPC and we say, okay, there's an apostolic move happening. We've talked a lot about that, but even there, this prophetic sense to say the voice of the Lord is speaking, he's calling out. And because of the way he has set things in order in this body, we listen and then we follow to the best of our ability. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't just say it's an apostolic move. It is a prophetic move. Mm. It is a pastoral move. Greenhouses. It is an evangelistic move. They're going out on the streets. It is a teacher move. That's why we have school of the spirit. Yeah. Not just one thing is moving here and that's why it's a body because so many things are moving at the same time. And it's fantastic. As long as you stay connected to the head. Yep. And, and that's where the order comes yes, in. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. know, Pastor Zach has been saying now on the heels of last year, there's a reason. See, for those who weren't here so long, we're like, wow, there's a lot of order going on. But he was saying that was something, the point that the Lord was driving home. It wasn't something that always was. Yeah. That Lord really wanted to communicate yes. that. And to that person's point that's shared with you, that's where the freedom is. Yes, sir. There's freedom in that order and those boundaries. Yes, sir. It actually is. Absolutely. I think that that, like, if we could just segue, mm. that's Genesis three. Yeah. If you can find the 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 there is freedom in in what we feel like is the confounds of what God is asking us to do, um, we feel like that is confining sometimes yeah. or it's shackling. But there's actually freedom in that, right? Because uh, and this is Pastor Zach's main point for Sunday that sin equals separation from God. Yeah. That is not freedom. Mm-hmm. Like that is that is the most confining thing. And so, again, if we can get back to like the main idea um, is that when he speaks it, it is freedom to mm-hmm, us mm-hmm. and that we should walk down that road. Um, and Eve doesn't. <laughs> no, she doesn't. You know, and, and we think we're better, Jamal. Right? Right? No, we think we would somehow. I don't. <laughs> some people are like I would have never done that. Yeah. You, you would have. Yeah. yeah you yeah, would yeah. have. Yes, you know. Yeah. Um, this is really the enemy may have said it to me different, yep. but I still would have probably ended up down the same road. Yeah. He, he would have been speaking a different language cause he knows me. I'm different than Eve. That's right. But he would have still been trying to tug me in that direction. That's just it. I yeah. love, I love that you're bringing this up. Hey, I have one more kind of fun oh, piece. Let's do it. So that's no, good. No, right. I love that your segue. That was like one of the best segues ever. No. It was perfect. <laughs> dude. It's like I set you up and you hit it right yeah, out of the park. You. I'm like, this is <laughs> awesome, dude. <laughs> one more question though. Um, this was really cool. I mean, for those of us who have been students of the word for a little bit of time and just watching not only students of the word, but knowing Pastor Zach, what a big deal that was without any like former, hey, I'm going to do this. He comes out with a new living translation on Sunday morning, which has already been a blessing to some to hear to this. S- gr- yeah, to this some. Great. <laughs> it's just to some. I thought that was great. I'm like, wow, way to go, Pastor was, Zach. I, honestly, okay. So we sat in staff meeting on Monday. Yeah, of course you were there. Yeah, yeah. On Monday and uh, Sunday, I was like, okay, is this really a thing? <laughs> And then Monday he used it, and I was like, oh, this is it's really a thing. A thing. Yeah. It's kind of stressing my brain out, but I'm working on it. That's great. I'm like, <laughs> when, when it came out, did you ever spend any time studying through it? Have you used the New Living Translation at all? Yeah, actually, 
that was really the first Bible that I started reading, right? Uh, what was it? The Student Life Application Bible. Yes, yes. Back in the day. You got it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I had that Bible, and that was the New Living Translation. Yep. And I actually started reading my Bible That's good. in the New Living Translation. Yeah. That's what. But when I grew up, I grew up Southern Baptist, and so that was KJV, like yeah. all, all the, the way. way. That's it. And that's what you memorized in. That's what you quoted in. Like yeah. everything came from the King James Version. But when I really started to dig in and understand what was going on, it was the New Living Translation. So I, I, it does have a special place in my heart. That's good. But the NASB I just love so much. That's so, so good. Yeah. And one of the things that we do at School of the Spirit is we we try to dispel a lot of these fears regarding translation. Sure. And so I love, I just love, you never know what you're going to expect, but for him to come up without any forewarning and say, we're in the NLT yeah. today. I'm like, this is great. Yeah, I just think, when you think you've got the church pegged or pastor pegged, no, you can't nail yeah, him down. The Lord is working on him too, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He was working on him too. I loved it. I yeah. thought it was great. I thought it was really awesome. And in, in case you're unaware, the New Living Translation really is a thought-for-thought translation. Mm -hmm. And so there is some word-for-word. NASB is considered the most literal translation, which is why it's choppy sometimes. Yes. So it's great to hear something that flows with ease and communicates a thought and not just literacy. There is a place for literacy, you know, and I think that's what we cherish. You, You brought up a great point, starting really diving into your scripture with the NLT to understand concept, context, and thought. And then really kind of like, okay, now I understand what King James is saying. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. And that's what I do in in my School of the Spirit class. I'm always trying to dig out some different versions. Like let's look at a different, let's let's get a different picture, a different perspective. Because sometimes just somebody describing it in a couple different words really changes how you see it. Sure. It's huge. Um, so again, that's why I love even here, like the full council, you preaching and Pastor Zach and like getting it from so many different places because the Lord really is saying the same thing. He is. But you're saying it in the NLT. I'm saying in the NASB, Zach's in the NIV. Like, and yep. it comes together beautifully yeah. and you get a full council, which is really fantastic. That's so, good. Yeah. That's it. I, we always try to encourage people not to be afraid. There's definitely some translations to stay away from. Sure. Okay. But, you know, overall, there's some good ones. So you yes, can get a Bible app. Absolutely. So as we do kind of swing back around to this message on Sunday, that sin equals separation from God, I want to start backwards and then go to where he began. Okay. Um, So Pastor You always do that. Do I? Yeah, you flip it a lot. Oh, that's so funny. Because you started last week, you you went back to the beginning, to the beginning of my sermon to end your... The breakdown. Anyway, I don't even remember. I love it. It's great. But so we we have this, you know, this Romans, uh, Romans six that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And you see this played out. What I love, this is where I want to start, um, is because the wages of sin is death. We often look at this and we say, "Wow, this is clearly, yeah, this is the message we need to bring to the world." Yes, we got to let the world know the evangelistic message. Yes, sir. But for Pastor Zach to bring up this excellent and profound point. This was to the church at Rome. Absolutely. This was to godly people. Yes, yes, yes. And how important it is for us to say, wow, like there is going to be a wage to this sin. Sure. So even, even before we get to the second part of that, that the gift of God is eternal life. I thought that was really awesome yeah. um, because we look at it kind of eternally and we don't look at it naturally yes. right now. But let's look real for a moment on how that separation of presence could take effect. I... As I think about it, I think about uh, taking inventory on the front end, okay? Mm. So it's like, um, you know, the Bible talks about the parable of the man doesn't build a house who hasn't, he's not a wise man unless he's counted the cost beforehand. Right. And I actually think it's the same way with sin, right? When we talk about wages, there's an accounting that happens that if if you do not take an accounting of your sin on the front end before you decide to start building on that thing, Mm. then it's going to cost you something. The wages, it's going to take something out of you. And wages are, we were talking before, wages are regularly coming out. So I think about, because we think about the eternal thing of, okay, death is all the way down the road. So I've got a lot of time before then. But there's a continue wages is a continuous thing that is happening there is continuous death Mm -hmm. that you are getting paid every time you sin when you do not count that cost ahead of time yeah so that's what i think about in a natural and an eternal place Mm -hmm. i'm losing out on something i'm losing out on life abundantly that's it because i've decided to separate myself from what god from god and what he's asked me to do yeah 
And and I think we can feel it too. Like growing up in the church, we can often feel like, man, why am I so far from the Lord right now? Like yeah. what's really going on? Why am I not hearing his voice so much? And there could be various reasons, but sometimes it's because we've numbed ourselves, We've dulled that voice. Mm-hmm. It's not that God has stopped speaking. Right. It's that we have become very deaf to yes, that. Sir. Yes, sir. Because we've kind of entertained some things that we shouldn't have. Now, now this is what I love is that the gift of God is eternal life. So where there is the wages of sin, which we're going to reap within our body. And I don't think we think about that, honestly. I think, oh, okay, because we're very flippant in our approach with God and because we we really do misuse and misunderstand grace, we think, oh, I just get out of this sin tomorrow. Yes, sir. And it's like, well, yeah, the penalty, the ultimate penalty for that sin has been paid for. But there still is going to be a wage for that. There's got to be an accounting for that. And it was eternally accounted. But we're inviting that death into our lives. Now, on the reciprocal, the gift of God, the free gift of God, you know, when we reckon ourselves dead to sin, this is what I love. I I couldn't help but go over to start studying out the word salvation on Sunday Mm -hmm. when Pastor Zach was talking. And literally, it breaks down to even the power over sin. We don't realize that the bloodshed of Jesus actually gives us authority yes, sir. over sin, yes, sir. the tendency, the desire yes, sir. to sin. Yeah. So that's why the writer Paul says in Romans, like, hey, listen, reckon yourself dead to that, yeah. just like Christ died. Yeah. And, and that word reckon, yeah. again, I, I, I lean into that because of reckless love actually is why I lean into it. Okay. So just, those of you who love reckless love, just don't listen to what I'm saying right now. But the, there is, I, I think that that's the challenge for me. A reckoning is an accounting. Yes, it is. It's an actual, it like sure I'm is. counting the numbers. And, and, and again, just to lean into that, you're getting... The penalty is gone, but the consequence is not. That's right. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I'm giving you mercy on the penalty itself, mm-hmm. but there are still consequences, right? Uh, uh, laws of science is that every right. action has an equal but opposite reaction, right? Yep. So there's something that is happening in the way of consequence, whether you walk with him or not. I know. There's consequence on both sides. Mm-hmm. So if you do walk with him, there is consequence there that you're getting, that you're reaping the benefits of. But some... You're sowing a seed in the ground, whether you walk with him or not. Yeah. Um, and so my wife leaned over to me on Sunday as Pastor Zach was talking, and he was saying that, um, again, you can talk to God, and that's everybody's kind of thing. And maybe we're leaning, we're going there soon. But uh, you can talk to God, but oftentimes him talking back to you is determinant on you walking with him. Mm. And so, again, it's it kind of lines up from the week before. I feel so weird talking about the message because no, it's, it's mine. That's great. <laughs> it's like a, That's great. But it like lands up so beautifully to me because I'm like, the closer you are, the easier it is to hear him speak. Sure. Um, and so you can talk to him from a mile away, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean you've heard anything back. Yeah. Right. And so I, I just uh, kind of was living in that. And he walks with me mm. and he talks with me. That's a really important part. And he tells me that I am his own yeah. and the joy that we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. And that's the consequence of yeah. walking with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. That that gift of God. Yes, sir. You know, if we want to see victory in those areas of sin in our lives, we actually have to reckon ourselves dead to yes, that. Sir. Yes, we have sir. to realize that that sin has no power over us. Yeah. I think most of us want to get to that place, Jamal, like where we're saying, wow, we're walking with the Lord. We don't just hear his voice or he hears our voice from miles away, that there is this place of intimacy that we're walking with him. And, you know, as, as Pastor Zach was bringing up Romans 8, what shall separate us from the love of God? Right. Who can bring a charge against? God's elect. Sure. Nobody can. Sure. It is God who's justified, who therefore can condemn. And nothing can separate us from his love. love right? And I thought this was really cool. Ding, I, ding, 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 ding. Exactly. <laughs> I have to tease this one out a little bit because I can be very, you know, strict and legalistic. Sure. And I love this. I'm like, okay, that's a really awesome concept to yeah. hear that nothing can separate us from the love of God, but his presence is. And walking with him, yeah, I can see that, how there there can't be that place of absolute disobedience and defiance and still walking in that place yeah. with the Lord. I yeah. like what you said, the penalty has been eternally paid for, yes, sir. but there's a consequence. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it's interesting, the word, even when you say presence, um, my wife uh, was, we were talking about this, and the presence in sign language, the sign for presence is face-to-face. Wow. And so... Again, when when you're leaning into trying to reach for the presence of God, 
that essentially, like if you can take that picture mm. and again, I know, I, I know that when you see the face of God, you die, right? That's like the Moses thing. But if you can see the face of God, you will die to the sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, That's what you're saying. You're yeah. reckoning yourself dead to it. Yeah. The more I seek him, yeah. the more I find him. That's it. And that is what kills the sin inside of me. Yeah. Because I want to be like my dad. That's it. I don't, I don't want to be like the rest of the world. Yeah. I want to walk with him, see what he does, and be like that. That's it. And so, again, I think that so much of it... Uh, is an identity piece. Mm. It's it's being a good son or daughter. Um, and if you see a good son or daughter, they're always paying attention to what their father is doing. When I watch like Finland and, and Willa watch their parents worship on the stage, I'm watching their eyes pay attention to all the little things moving around. Mm. And then I watch Willa put her hands up and emulate her mom in worship. I watch a Grace Maida in chapel emulate Nicole on the stage. And there's something in my heart that just says, oh my God, like that's it. Like that, (laughs) like that's it. That's it. And that is the picture that I look at and I think, oh, that's what the Lord wants us to be like. He wants us to look at him and follow that. And then the sin washes away because he has washed us in the water of the word, right? We've hidden his word in our hearts so that we might not sin against him. And then we're doing what we see our father do. Yeah. And that kills the sin in us. So get face to face church, get face to face with him so that other stuff can die in you. Well, well, that's just it. That time alone with the Lord. I love that you brought up Moses because you're teaching Pentateuch in school yeah. <laughs> and we're in the Bible overview and we just touched Moses and it says that Moses talked with God yes. face to face, yes. like a man would talk face to face. So that whole point you're bringing up is when you're in the presence of God and then Hebrews says that Moses chose rather to suffer with with the people of God than to pursue and enjoy the passing pleasures Mm. of sin. The only way Moses could have done that is if he had the accounting, is if he had the reckoning. And as you're talking here, I keep thinking about the, the reckoning yourself dead to sin and choosing the gift of God, that eternal life. Literally, we talk about this a lot in council or in school. There is a choice when you're standing there. You know, Eve had a choice. Sure. And you you talked, you know, earlier in the week or the week before about how she looked and she saw and it seemed good to her. So she's computing. Those yes. are all those terms yes, that she's say. computing. Yes, she's say. reckoning. She's Absolutely. like, okay. Absolutely. Which is changing. She's letting her sight become her faith yes, instead sir. of the hearing, which yes, she sir. already heard. And so there is that choice. We don't actually think. We think, oh, I have fallen right into this sin. Well, the more we're walking with the Lord, the more that he helps us stop early on and realize what James says. Hey, listen, desire gives birth to sin. Mm -hmm. Sin, when it's fully grown, Mm -hmm. brings forth death. Death. Yes, sir. What I love about Sunday's message was that it wasn't just, hey, listen, if you keep on sinning, you're going to die someday. That's what we often hear. We look in the eternal perspective, but it's as long as we allow that sin to live in our lives, mm. we're dying yes. in that area. Yes, sir. And that death is permeating yes, sir. and spreading to areas that God already paid for us to have yes, eternal sir. life in. Yes, sir. In eighth grade Bible, we're talking about um, Jesus healing the the man with leprosy. Mm. And uh, it's such an interesting comparison because, again, and, and we don't say this in such plain words, but leprosy, when you think of um, back in the day, again, yeah, it was a skin disease, but stuff would start falling off, yeah. like noses and arms and legs and stuff like that. And again, we go back to if it is that we are a body of Christ, leprosy is to is to the body what sin is to the body of Christ. Wow. And wow. we've got think members falling off wow. l- literally in death. Wow. Because they've allowed sin to do what leprosy does. Mm. This is what it this is what sin does. Wow. Right. Um, and so I think that if if we can take a different picture again, if we can uh, get close to the one who can heal the leprosy, mm-hmm. he's the one that has the power to do that. Um, that that as we get close to him, he is the one that declares us clean. And that there is nothing even a step further that Jesus touches that man. I know. Ugh! I know. Like, what is this? He doesn't what? just say it, but he shows. He touches. That is yeah. not so. Yeah. Uh, and again, I always go back to, oh, most holy. There is nothing that touches Jesus that makes him not holy. Yeah. And so we want to take our sin and pull it into ourselves and want to deal with it first. Yep. As opposed to offering it to him and letting him make us holy because there's no way for us to make him unholy. That's it. 
That's it. Well, you know, you're bringing up another point that I wanted to draw out here, and it's that we can recoil and we can pull back, especially when we start talking about sin. Um, we can recoil and pull back and say, man, I'm just not good enough. I'm just not worthy enough. And that's really the resounding theme and communication of the enemy. Mm-hmm. And we're leaning on a self-will. We're, we're expecting that at some point in our lives, we're going to be able to be good enough to come to the Lord. You brought up a phenomenal point of the gospel of Jesus. If you read it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, you're going to see the same thing. The people who received from Jesus were the people who were the most broken and yet knew where to go with their brokenness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Poor in spirit. Yes. They get the kingdom. <laughs> yes. That's it. Yeah. And and so, again, in eighth grade, I don't know why I keep going it's back great. to eighth grade. I love it's it. It's like the poor in spirit. When you have that conversation, we don't really think about that. Yeah. But it's like the people who know that they don't have a, a, enough quantity or quality. Yep. That's poor. Yep. Okay. Quality or quantity. And I'm like, oh no, I bring that to the Lord. Yes. And he says, You inherit the you hand me that. Yes. And I'll give you the kingdom. That's it. What? I know. That's it. Yeah. Beauty for ashes. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. All that we have to offer are ashes. Yes, sir. And that, that somehow the Lord takes pleasure in God's economy. If we're talking com- computing terms and, yeah. and accounting, yeah. in his economy. It's most beautiful to him for us to realize that we are poor in spirit. Mm-hmm. And and I think that, you know, we can all get this conceptually in terms of like, hey, when I came to salvation. And so if you're a new believer, this is really important to realize there's really nothing that you could do, have done, will ever do that God hasn't already paid for through mm-hmm. the, the bloodshed of Jesus. Yes, Jesus is described as the full atonement. Yes, sir. So it's there. And all we have to do is actually acknowledge that, reach out and exchange the ashes of our yes, life, sir. the death of our life for that eternal life. The step further that I love that we were going to on Sunday with Pastor Zach is that this needs to be a rehearsal of our daily living. That, and this is what Paul writes to Galatians. He says, listen, have you become so foolish? Who bewitched you? Mm -hmm. You think having begun in the spirit, Mm -hmm. you're now going to be made (laughs) perfect in the flesh? No. You know, and Jamal, this is kind of one of those amazing places where we, we know that the Lord did it for us in our ungodliness. And now when we come into relationship with him, we can recoil and say, I need to get a little bit cleaner and better mm-hmm. before I come sure. to him. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like the, again, the holding back the thing that's wounded. Mm. Uh, I deal with a lot of kindergartners and first graders. And when something hurts, the initial response is to pull it back to yourself. It's not to let someone look at it. Whoa, interesting. That's the initial response. Pull interesting. it back. And so I think that, again, that's our initial response with the Lord. As we are a childlike, yeah, you know, yes, our faith, true. Uh, our initial response sometimes is to pull back from him, as opposed to letting him see it and touch it and put a bandaid on it and mm. kiss it better. Mm. Uh, he desperately does want to do that. And I even you were talking about the ashes to the beauty. Again, he enjoys taking death to life. Yes, he really does. Yeah. That's why you bring your sin to him, church. Yeah. Because for the wages of sin is death. When you bring it to him and you get healed of it, he literally has taken your death. Yes. And made it life. That's good. And he loves doing that. Yeah. So don't allow your sin to push you away from him. Mm-hmm. Again, it was uh, like the example I used a couple of weeks ago, just the GPS. Like I'm stepping back from the GPS because I can't hear it. That's nuts. I got to get closer. And so when I have a boo-boo and I want somebody to put a Band-Aid on it, I have to get close to the person that I want to heal it. Yeah. Otherwise, they can't touch it. They can't. I'm not actually bringing anything to them. It will hurt consistently y- yes. until I bring it to them. That's so good. And that's an excellent point. I I love that you're bringing it up here right now, Um, regardless of where you are, you know, as you're listening, you're thinking, okay, hey, I'm kind of new to the faith or, hey, I've been following the Lord for a long time, but there is an easily besetting sin for me. There is a sin that easily besets me. You know, I love what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 12, therefore laying aside every weight. Yes, every weight. Every weight and the sin sin, that so easily besets you. You know, yeah, let yeah. us run with endurance. Yeah, in Genesis, I mean, that that is such a, a powerful statement to me. Sin is crouching yeah, at, at your, your door. door. It's waiting to master you. Mm-hmm. It's like, <laughs> that sounds awful. But Jesus is also standing at the door. Yeah. And he's knocking. And so there's, again, there's something that we don't have to be fearful of in the sin place. Because Jesus is at the door too. Yeah. yeah, sin is at your door, but Jesus is standing there. It's right there. And so you've, again, got to decide what it is that you're going to let in. I would say, um, just to reiterate that reckoning thing, there has to be a day of reckoning in your life. Mm. 
there's got to be a day that you sit back and start taking inventory and accounting yeah. for your own thing. Again, you can't you can't cover the cost of it. No. Right? Unless you want to do that with your own life. But you should still reckon the cost of it. Mm-hmm. Okay? If somebody's buying you something, I still want to know how much I'm going to have to pay to buy it for you. Right? Yeah. And Jesus already knows that. But for you to know that gives you a gratitude on another level yeah. when you know how much it actually cost, mm-hmm. right, to see your sin on the cross. Yeah. But he's already done that. If we can take uh, take ourselves and, and make a reckoning in that place, I think that, uh, again, it helps you to bring it to him, knowing that you're poor, that you can't really offer anything, and then you get exchanged life yeah. and life abundantly. And eternal, the gift of God is eternal life. That's and so you get good. That. That's so good. And as we kind of bring this to a close, I think it's really important to really say if we have, this wouldn't be a reiteration, this would be maybe an iteration, that this is why grace and mercy is so important. It is by grace through faith that we are saved. It is the gift of God. It's not of works. And that's the whole picture. It will be one thing to have this conversation on sin and death and be like, wow, this stinks, doesn't it? But to know all the more that we have been given the free gift of God, it was free to us, but it cost him everything. Yes, sir. The free gift of yes, salvation. Sir. And and this is it. If we have this opportunity, if the Spirit of God is right there knocking on the door, why don't we just let him in? And I believe one of the ways we do this sometimes, confessing your sins one to another, yes, you may be healed. Yes, sir. And, and this really helps us to look at a brother and sister face to face. Again, you know, shameless plug for the greenhouses. Yes, this sir. is what's going to be important important yeah. as we do life together to say, hey, wow, you know, I've really been wrestling with this. I'm done. I don't want this death anymore in my life. God doesn't want this death anymore in my yeah. life. But we have so easily wounded one another. Mm-hmm. And the Christians for a long time, you know, I know, everybody knows, we've been really good at slaying our wounded And I mean, we can't even get into that when Pastor Zach was Mm -hmm. talking to us on staff meeting, but just this concept of slaying the wounded instead of helping and Mm -hmm. healing the wounded. And we're so afraid we won't open up our hearts and reveal to one another. We can't get to the point of confessing sin to one another, because if I confess, you might just slay me. You're going to see that I'm wounded. Sure. And again, uh, the Lord has challenged me so hard with that scripture specifically in the like, probably probably this year, um, that you confess your sins one to another. And pray for one another. Yeah. That you may be healed. Yeah. Right? So it's not just the confession of sin. That's good. That's it's not, good. It can't be. That's good. It's got to be the confession of sin and praying for That's one another. good. That, yeah. my friends, brings healing. Yeah. That is how you heal the wounds. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to marry that with uh, another thing that Paul's writing is as we really do bring this to a close. <laughs> I know. It's like so hard. We're like, I could still How many doors the, do we have? I know. Um <laughs> Just this whole concept that if any of you is overtaken in a trespass, let those of you who are spiritual restore such of one yes. in a spirit of humility yes. and grace. Why? Considering yourselves, lest you also be tempted. That's really the heartbeat that should be in us, which is what we're saying. And as we're going to learn to do this life together, that's the heartbeat we have to have. Yes, sir. You know, yep. And that's what you see. You see it over here at HPC. It's awesome. Yeah. So, hey, would you just pray for all of us today, man? Be great. I will. Uh, can I just one more? Go for it. Um, I, I want to um, hone in on it. If you don't die with Christ, you might not live with him. Mm. Okay. So submit to God or submit to separation. Mm. Um, Lord, today we decide we're going to submit to you. Mm. Not only are we going to submit, we're going to surrender. Yes, Lord. Uh, We know that the marriage covenant that you want with us is a picture of mutual submission. And so, God, I thank you for that. I thank you that we can ask you and you do things for us. Mm. I thank you that we can ask you um, for bread and you bring it to us. That that when the Israelites asked for water, you you wanted to give that to them. So, God, make us uh, that way. Help our hearts in a reckoning place, but also on on the other side, let us reckon our sin. Uh, let it sober us. Let it let it bring us back to you, running, screaming back to you, like the prodigal son. And I thank you that you're standing there waiting for us to come in. God, we decide to submit and to surrender to you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our strength, all of our soul. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jamal, thank you so much. 
Thank you for having me. For joining me today. Thank you, sir. It's really awesome. Hey, this is The Breakdown. So glad to have our guest here, Jamal. And it's been a great time. We'll catch you all next week. Luke, we miss you. We really do, buddy. (laughs) 